from Bob. Okay. Was excellent, excellent presentation. Thank I love you. I Goucher just as a school. I love Goucher. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm really glad to hear we're on your radar because um, yeah, absolutely. From a, a little further away, such a small school, the name doesn't quite always get over there. So, uh, so we had I'm, students who have applied to Goucher and some that have been accepted to Goucher. Um, I have yet to have a student go, but part of the challenge was the kind of like the gap and sometimes the monetary yeah. gap kind of stood in the way and they were fearful of that. But Goucher, they love Goucher. No, oh, I'm, I'm, again, just really happy to hear uh, you're aware of us because sometimes I'll visit a new area and they say, oh, I never heard of Boucher College. And I'm like, well, okay, <laughs> let's start with that. What do, you, what do you mean about the gap? You don't have to worry about that as a college aim student, Denise. Oh. <laughs> Talk, okay. to Mr. Talk to Mr. Sheffield about it and hurry up and get your essay completed and everything else, because I haven't spoken to you in a while, and get your application in. Goucher is an excellent school. Ditto. <laughs> okay. okay, talk to Mr. Sheffield. I'm sorry, Dr. Sheffield, immediately after this. And you won't have to worry about that. Okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. No, it's good advice. Um, we're here to help you like cross your T's and dot your I's. So just please, please reach out to, to the resources you have. It's an excellent opportunity, like amazing opportunity. It really is. It's, it's a good I one. mean, I can't tell you how many people I would, knew wish they had that opportunity. So this is really great what College Aim and Goucher are doing together. Really great. Hmm. Yeah, so um, if we have new folks on the call, I'm just gonna start from the top, but please yep. feel free to use the chat and uh, ask me questions as we go, and I'll try to bounce back and forth between the two. Uh, so if you weren't here, if you didn't hear earlier, uh, we're located just north of Baltimore. If you were here, you're gonna hear all the same stuff again. Uh, we're two miles north of the city. So uh, Baltimore is a really great college town. Um, I think I didn't mention last time, there's about 14 colleges in the area. Comes out to like 140,000 college students. So there's plenty to do uh, between the campuses. There's a lot of events kind of targeted at college students. Um, on the bottom here, this is a picture kind of like halfway down the city, like Midtown. Middle picture is downtown. That's the Inner Harbor on the other end of the city. That's only about 20 or 30 minutes away from us. And then Washington, D.C. is pretty close to Baltimore, too. It's only about an hour away from Baltimore, an hour 20 from, from Goucher. Uh, you don't have to, like, leave campus to find something to do. It's a very active student life. But if you wanted to, on a Saturday, kind of stretch your legs, go downtown, um, go to a Smithsonian in Baltimore or something like that. It's really great to have uh, these two major cities in our own backyard. So there's, there's really a, a lot to explore. Campus itself, though, is a huge um, plus for us. It's, it's a really uh, gorgeous place to, to live. Uh, it's 287 acres. Uh, so we have a lot of space. It's very wooded. Uh, so you'll see a lot of uh, you know, trees on campus, students kind of hanging out in hammocks over here if it's a nice day. Uh, we have about a mile of hiking trails and we even have horses. We have a couple dozen horses on campus. So you wouldn't think you're in the suburbs right next to a city, but I live right over here in the Inner Harbor, the, the middle picture there, busiest place downtown. And again, that's only 20 or 30 minutes away. Um, they do a good job, you know, getting you off campus like this bottom right picture. That's an outdoor classroom. If it's a nice day, a small seminar might have class outside. Um, so the campus is, is pretty laid back, pretty kind of relaxed social atmosphere, I would say, culturally. Um, and then this is just kind of our, our stats. It's a small liberal arts school. You can see, again, the, the uh, size, uh, 1,100 students. So we are, our student body is quite small. This is a kind of class where you can see there you're going to have small classes. Uh, you're going to be having a lot of back and forth with your professors. They're going to know what the interest is of their individual class. They're going to uh, stay away from just like giving you notes or kind of dictate uh, lessons at you. They're, they're going to give you information ahead of time and, and, and kind of have more of an exchange with the class. They might break you into small groups. So very interactive classes. This is a kind of college where students are excited to show up uh, and have a conversation about things. You know, sometimes you have an 8 a.m. class. You just have to uh, roll with that. But usually students are excited to, to come and engage uh, with one another rather than just being in like a large lecture hall. Uh, we actually only have two lecture halls on campus, so they're really uh, very much the exception for our students. Um, just going over very briefly what a liberal arts curriculum kind of means in general. 
uh, what, what we're really trying to do is make sure students have uh, a, a, um, a variation of, of uh, skills and abilities. Uh, you're going to study a lot of things that are outside of your major. So these are topics here that, that every student will, will really cover regardless of their major. Coming in your first semester, you'll, you'll have a first year seminar. Uh, those are typically more interdisciplinary classes that cover a, a kind of a, a range of different uh, disciplines. Like I said, it's, it's usually not just, ju just a biology class or just a history class or, or just a computer science class. They're usually a range of, of different topics. And then complex problem exploration classes, CPEs, that's really the same kind of concept. It's, it's usually covering um, ongoing trends or uh, you know, current events over time, again, through the lens of a few different majors. So that's really what a liberal arts school is about, is, is being able to attack a problem through a few different lenses. And then we have uh, these areas of proficiency we want to make sure all of our students cover, again, regardless of major. You, at Goucher, you'll take at least a couple data analytics classes. I know that, sound, that sounds a little technical, but it might be um, a, a stats course, a math course, a logic space course. Um, again, even if you're not going to go into that sort of field, we want to make sure all of our students have uh, that, that ability. Foreign language and culture, same reason. I'll, I'll talk about that uh, for a few points later on. And then finally, writing. Even if you're going into something that's more technical and less writing intensive, we want to make sure all of our graduates are, are strong communicators, have strong writing abilities. So that's very fundamental to a liberal arts school. And the same is true for this final point. We just feel that it's too important for our graduates not to have familiarity with, with points of race, power, and perspective, as well as environmental sustainability. Uh, those are major priorities for the college, but also I would say just pretty close to the DNA of the, the uh, student body itself. You know, These are topics you're gonna hear students talking about outside of the classroom, things a typical Goucher student really does care about. Uh, so I don't want you to think of these things as just to kind of get out of the way and, and be done with the requirements. Uh, these are very central to the philosophy and, and the current values of the college. Uh, and, and along that, you know, academic life is uh, it's very open. Uh, we, I, I often say we have anything from the fine and performing arts. You can see bottom right here, our, our dance program is, has a really great reputation. It's at a conservatory level, all the way to, uh, you know, computer science and a very rigorous pre-med track. Uh, so again, a liberal arts school is, is trying to give you a lot of range um, to, to, to come at, at current issues with, with different skills. Uh, this is just all thrown on one slide, our list of majors. It doesn't look as expansive when it's all on one list here. But usually students will find an interest that might kind of fall be between a couple different topics. If you have a major you're thinking about, feel free to, to throw that into the chat. I'm happy to talk about that um, the best I can. I'm a generalist, but you know, you don't have to have a dual major goucher. Many students do, but they usually at least have a secondary interest or a minor, or they might just kind of have like a, another tangent within their major. And I think that's a huge advantage to a small school where you can have these ongoing uh, conversations with your professors. You're in small classes. You might change the direction of your major as you get to talk to more professors and see what their work is, is like in the real world outside of campus. Uh, so don't feel uh, bad about changing your mind or coming to us undecided. I would say a liberal arts school does really well with students like that. Even to the point I, I, I usually mention, halfway down the center column, the individualized interdisciplinary major, that is really just a program where you make your own focus of study. So you combine three different elements. I, I think I was mentioning in the last call, a recent graduate put together economics or data analytics program and psychology for a behavioral economics focus, uh, which is really cool. I know a student uh, a couple of years back put together it was biology, elements of our pre-med concentration, and philosophy for a holistic health study. So you can really be as creative as you want with this, and you uh, can talk to your professors and, and help uh, let them help you guide uh, your, your uh, direction as you go. Um, just looking at the uh, chat here, uh, major psychology, minor business. Yep, super common. Um, I was mentioning psych is our most popular major. Business is usually our second most popular major. So you could absolutely do those two. Um, you, could, you could really combine those for uh, a proficiency in both, but also more of a behavioral organizational 
uh, background for, for more um, group, group leadership and group dynamic uh, studies, if you wanted to, that could be a good application of both, absolutely. Um, and then so I'm seeing, uh, talking a little bit more about communication and media studies, that usually follows pretty closely after business for popul uh, popularity. That'll range from more of the media and production side, um, so working kind of behind the scenes um, for uh, the actual technical elements, all the way to more of uh, journalism and uh, the written word, uh, either in you know our uh, student-run studio or in the past, um, we've had students intern uh, like downtown at the uh, Channel 13 newsroom or the Baltimore Sun is a local local paper. Um, so. Absolutely. Uh, another point here, I'm seeing uh, someone's asking about art history. That could really live within a few different points for us. Um, it could be in uh, you know history. It could be in our integrative arts program. It could be in uh, American studies, which is going to cover a little bit of um, contemporary art and obviously American history. Visual material culture might be of interest to you uh, because that's kind of a cross between um, the fine arts and historic preservation or museum curation studies as well. Uh, it's looking at different artifacts and architecture and going into the social and cultural uh, development and, and significance of that. We actually have a really cool special collections department at Goucher where uh, you can go in and, and catalog different items in there. I actually haven't been uh, cataloged before. This would be with the supervision of faculty. Goucher has a, a way better special collections department than we really have any right to as a small school. We actually have on permanent loan to Johns Hopkins mummified remains, if you can believe it. Babylonian tablets. Um, we have, I got to get this straight. It's either this, uh, it's a Jane Austen collection that is either the second greatest collection in, um, in the country or in the world, but one of the best Jane Austen collections on the planet. Um, and you can get into the special collections department to handle those things. Uh, they get students on campus as well. Um, so yeah, I have a lot to talk about on that topic apparently. So I'll, I'll keep moving. Um, these are the majors here. We have the minors and concentration. So yeah, you know, you can, you can combine things as well. Doesn't even have to be like an overlapping interest. You could take computer science and, and dance just because you want to try a dance program. That's, that's fine. Uh, and I also like to point out on the bottom right here, we have some what are called four plus one partnerships with a couple business schools nearby. You could go to Goucher and major in any topic. And then instead of taking two years to get your master's afterwards, just get your master's in one year at the Johns Hopkins Business School or the business school at Loyola University, Maryland. Both are just a couple miles down the road from here. Uh, so that's open to, to any major of a Goucher student, and we're developing new partnerships like that uh, with, with colleges nearby. Uh, so yeah, these are minors or concentrations. I usually like to point out the pre-med, pre-health concentration is fully designed to get students to, to med school. Um, on the other end of the scale, you know, music is, and, and theater tend to be really popular at Goucher. I would say we, we oftentimes attract a more creative or artistic type of student. I definitely don't want you to think this isn't the type of school for you if, if you don't um, identify that way with, you know, within the arts as a, as a creative student. We have plenty of students come here and just want to do computer science. That's totally fine too. But we have a lot of music and, and theater groups on campus as well. Uh, so it, a lot of times students ask me like, hey, what's your college about? What's your main major? And I kind of have to say it's every major because that's, that's what a liberal arts school is, is trying to do basically. Uh, I'll keep us moving though. Um, study abroad is a huge portion, and uh, thank you for that question. I'll mention that at the end, uh, Denise, about the scholarship. Good question. Uh, Goucher's a little unique in that we actually require all of our students to study abroad. So to reiterate, a lot of colleges have study abroad. You can do it if you want to. Goucher's like, nope, you have to do this. It's part of the actual graduation requirements. So if you come to Goucher, you will spend a little over uh, time overseas taking classes. I would like to say, because it's a requirement, there's a lot of flexibility. You can go wherever you'd like. You can go for a full semester or just three weeks. You can go somewhere based on your major or you can go somewhere just based on the food. It doesn't even have to do with your major. It's totally your choice. Uh, there are staff to help you figure this out. They help you uh, pick the classes and what kind of culture you might enjoy. If you've never left the country, you can just kind of go over to 
Uh, you know, the UK, it's not that far. They, they speak English everywhere. It's, it's not as challenging. We can go all the way to the other side of the world. Um, you know, Japan, uh, New Zealand tend to be popular as well. So uh, it's really up to your comfort level. Um, again, doesn't have to be for your major, but in the past, uh, Central and South America is a good example for some environmental science students. They've gone to look at different ecological systems uh, based on agritourism in the area. Uh, Europe ranges from a really cool fine arts program uh, in Italy to you can go over and be an intern in British Parliament for a semester, which is really excellent for our political science uh, students to be able to do that. So you can usually do a lot of travel uh, between uh, countries as well in a continent like Europe, you know, uh, a, a semester over there usually has some time for your, for your own uh, kind of branching out and travel. Uh, Africa, I hear a lot of popularity from our South African program, and there's a really neat uh, dance program in Ghana that looks at different African cultural influences on, on modern dance. So really, you know, you don't have to figure this out. You don't have to know your, your study abroad plans before you get to Goucher. We typically don't have you go until junior year, and there's a lot of people to help with that along the way. But uh, just know that you will go somewhere, and it's a lot of fun. I would really encourage you to ask about the opportunities at any college you're checking out, not just Goucher. One of the best things you can do in college, period, is study abroad. So uh, if, you, if you come here, if you do a regular semester, your tuition and financial aid just roll right over and cover the cost. So uh, we've got you covered for a semester, um, which is kind of another perk of the requirement. Yep, um, so I'll just keep it moving as, as usual. I was mentioning a lot about our support uh, resources on, on the last call. Goucher has a lot of support for you. Anything from professional development to, to help with your studies in our academic support center, to a counseling center, a health center, if you're not feeling well physically, a wellness center to reinforce um, good habits like getting enough sleep and exercise in your diet. You're really well looked after at a small school like this. And uh, we have so many resources, it, it actually kind of sometimes confuses students on where to go. So we have individual success teams. You can kind of see these staffs uh, surrounding an individual student. Um, so if you have a, a question pertaining to a certain topic, you'll know right who to go to to talk about that. If you have a, uh, a question about getting an internship, you have a career advisor. If you have an issue or question in, about your you know, res life in your dorms, or you have a res coordinator, um, you have a success advisor, uh, going over, you know, your academic development, everything like that. So you're, you're going to be challenged at a school like this, but you're also going to have endless support about uh, who can kind of back, back that up for you. Uh, that's really been woven into your four-year experience. So we understand as, uh, you know, you, you go through freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, your needs will change and, and the support uh, team will change as well. Um, but we have a specific uh, program for uh, first generation students as well uh, to make sure that they have specific advising uh, to make sure that the transition is, is as smooth as possible also. Uh, so just know there's a lot of staff here waiting to, to help you su uh, support your four years. And student life, I was mentioning earlier, it's, it's pretty, uh, pr very social, I would say friendly, laid back, on Goucher's campus. I'd love to connect you with a student on campus if you'd ever like to talk to one of our students. Um, it's really residential, so we have housing for all four years. The first year village where you would live, that's very new, uh, only three or four years old. Right next to the dining center, usually people ask like, how good is the food? And I always say, I'm sure every college says their food is good. Like, why would you say your food is bad? But um, we usually rank in the top 30 in the US for campus dining. So that's like top 30 out of like, you know, a, a few thousand colleges. So I'll just let that statistic do its own uh, work there. And for other points for, for student life, the Center for Race, Equity and Identity uh, is a really great office. It supports uh, international students, LGBTQ students, first gen students, students of color. Uh, again, that's just kind of another uh, place you can go to seek out staff to, to support you. Um, I also see a lot of good student leadership come out of there. Clubs and organizations will really range. I was talking a lot about uh, an entrepreneurship group on this last call. There's a psychology club, um, a bio club, a, a, a student newspaper that's taken pretty seriously. 
And then there's other kind of fun things like there's a beekeeping club. They, they sell honey and uh, they actually have hives on campus. There's um, humans versus zombies, which is basically a three day survival mode Nerf gun fight. It's hilarious. Students get really into it. Uh, so there's a lot to do on campus. Uh, the student engagement team oversee that as well as the uh, rec and wellness uh, center as well. So it's very active, you know, students stick around on evenings and, and weekends, I would say. Um, if you can ever come to campus or even virtually, uh, you know, happy to connect you to a professor of a major you're thinking about or students on campus, I'd really recommend uh, trying to connect with folks as much as possible before enrolling somewhere. So you can always reach out to me and I can help connect you. Very easy to do that. Uh, this is just kind of another look at pictures on the left, our first year village. The top center picture is the dining center. Um, and then on the right are... Um, our, our kind of spring fling, that's our uh, get into Goucher day in April. Um, so it's very active. Any athletes on the call were division three. So if you wanted to get into uh, in, in contact with a coach, I'm also help, uh, happy to connect you that way. Um, but there's plenty of like club and intramural uh, games, volleyball, tennis, basketball, soccer, frisbee tend to be pretty popular there. Um, so you can come to campus uh, and, and speak with the coach if that's something you're thinking about. And then finally, uh, just for like outcomes, uh, generally, uh, nearly all of our grads are either uh, in further education, so a graduate program or employed a year after leaving Goucher. Uh, for all the reasons I was listing, you know, the, the fundamentals of the curriculum, the resources you have, the staff supporting you, the connection to professors, uh, our students are really well prepared to go into the workforce or, or get further education after leaving. Uh, these are just a few places we've sent students in the past. And this isn't something you're going to have to, you know, work on as you're graduating. This is something we build up over four years. You'll have worked with your professors to make sure you have all the, the demonstrated uh, experience to get into these grad programs. They'll write you very strong letters of recommendation. Uh, the same is true going right into the workforce, you know. Our career education uh, staff will uh, make sure you have your best foot forward. You can usually find a connection, kind of like a side door uh, to different industries nearby. Uh, this is a, a recent study that was done by Georgetown about the average earnings for our graduates. So it's, it's just basically showing that there have been pretty high earnings for, uh, you know, getting a Goucher degree. This uh, bar at the bottom is going over the net present value uh, added to a Goucher degree. So the amount of money you will make in addition to going, uh, the, the additional money you'll make, sorry, uh, from going to Goucher 20 and 30 and 40 years out. Um, so the, the value added, the increased earnings on average for a Goucher grad is almost a million dollars more uh, 40 years after leaving the college. Just really nice to see. For the application process, Generally, we're fine with early action or regular decision. Um, either one is fine. We're on the common application. We are test optional and we have been for a while. There's no application fee. For college AIM students on the call, we would really recommend early action. And you can talk more about that with uh, Dr. Sheffield because um, we actually do have two full scholarships set aside for college AIM students. So uh, that's something we can assess based on all the college AIM application, applications we have received. But again, that has to be uh, before our early action deadline, which is December 1st. So um, for college AIM students, make sure you're uh, getting all your stuff in uh, on the early side. And I can help with that too, I'll give you my email. Um, but generally either one is fine um, because uh, our, our normal scholarships are just fully automatic. So all we need is your application and the FAFSA, if you're sending that in as well, um, there's nothing else you have to hunt down. You apply and you'll automatically receive back that information. These are the averages we were able to hand out last year. Uh, the 31,000 figure just being grants and scholarships alone. So nothing need, needing to be repaid. And on average, the 36,000 uh, figure there is also including a little bit of federal loans and, and things like work study. Um, so again, College AIM students go for early action, and, and we do have a couple special scholarships set aside, uh, but generally these are our averages handed back for early action or regular decision, no difference there. So um, almost to 1.30, if we have any other questions, please feel
feel free to, to put that in the chat. Um, I'm just gonna type my email as you do that. Thank you, Mr. Shields, uh, for your presentation uh, today. Of course. Um, of course, as you stated, if you have any additional questions, feel free to unmute yourselves or type it in the chat and he will uh, address your question. I do want to make uh, one additional announcement in regards to the scholarship for College Aim. Um, so in order to be eligible for that scholarship, you have to, of course, have a 3.5 GPA or higher and you must be Pell eligible, okay? How do you determine if you're Pell eligible? You have to get your FAFSA done. You gotta get it done. So um, please, by all means, you know, you, we know that uh, FAFSA opened on October the 1st. We held, we held our FAFSA night, I believe it was on September the 30th. So um, if you have any questions in regards to uh, completing your FAFSA, by all means, reach out to myself or uh, Mr. A or Ms. Neely so that we can assist you because we really wanna get those documents in as soon as possible. Are there any additional questions uh, for Mr. Shields in regards to Goucher? That was all for me. Um, thank you. Absolutely. Um, Take my email. I'd be happy to chat after today. Um, did I send that to the chat? Okay. Azari, are you speaking to Mr. Shields or me? Okay, Mr. Shields. Yep, so that's, uh, I just put that right in before you contacted. Okay. Have a good day. I gotta go mm -hmm. back to class. <laughs> See you later, thank you. All right, if we don't have any other questions, um, that is all for today. Um, of course, we will follow up with you as students about your applications and of course, by all means, this is what we're here for. We're here to assist you and guide you through this process, answer any questions that you may have. So um, we will be in contact. Again, thank you, Mr. Shields, for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you are all over the place. <laughs> so. Not a problem. Well, this is where this this is where I want to be. This is a good application of my time. So no worries. Help. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, we will reach out to you later on. Wonderful. Yes. Right. See you. All right. Take care. Thank you. I'll see you. Bye-bye.